what would you do if a cop asks you to pull over in the dead of night and, to your horror, you realize that it's not an actual cop, so supposedly it's a stranger, or worse, a delirious criminal who's there to harm you in the worst way possible. Now, the question ponders, why did he stop you? Well, guess what? In this episode of Mr. Frightening, we'll find the answer to that. We bring you this real-time accounts of true disturbing stories. The narrations in this video make up for the worst cop stories ever told. These might not well be the creepiest horror stories, but don't expect any less from them. So, let's begin. Stranger Knocking the Door our first story comes from Adam, whose account makes up for one of the worst cop stories ever told. Here's his story in his words. My name's Adam, and I come from a wealthy family. Years back, my parents bought a two-acre, lavishly furnished vacation property in Quincy, California. I can recall going there and playing with my siblings when I was a kid. I was still fond of this vacation home and thought of spending a weekend there. It was when I had started seeing Rose, my girlfriend, that I planned a trip to Quincy with her. I teased the idea of spending a weekend at our place, and she liked it. So we packed our bags and went on a road trip to Quincy. After a long and tiring drive, we finally arrived in Quincy. So I gave her a little tour of the house, and she was impressed. There was a hot tub jacuzzi on the back deck. I switched it on so we could have a relaxing time later. Then I took her out to the town to eat at one of my favorite restaurants and for some sightseeing. Later that day, when it got darker, we headed back to the house. To break off the cold, we jumped into the hot tub to relax. Suddenly, we heard footsteps emerging from the nearby forest. We thought it was a bear, so we left the hot tub and ran inside the house. I looked out of the window, thinking I'd see a bear, but instead, I saw a person's shadow walking by the house. I quickly closed the curtain. Inside, I told Rose to be quiet. After a quiet moment, someone knocked on our front door and said they were the police, responding to our complaint that a burglar had broken into our vacation home. Even though I would have naturally attended the officer face to face, but at that moment, I was rather skeptical. I even checked out that police's car by peeking out of the window. My suspicion only grew stronger because I didn't see a police car. I asked what the problem was, and the person said we had a complaint. I said we didn't call, and our nearest neighbor was far away. So, assuming that an actual cop landed at my door purely by chance seemed absurd at that moment. I looked out the window again, but there was no police car. We were now a bit unnerved by the presence of this stranger who claimed to be a cop. The person knocked on the door again, demanding we open it. I told him I didn't see a police car so I couldn't trust him. We desperately wanted to see him retreat. Surprisingly, the person didn't say anything. After a short while, we thought he had left. There was no activity outside the door. So, to relax our minds and kill the fear of the stranger, we watched TV that night and fell asleep. The next morning, we went hiking and had fun in the forest. After having lunch and watching a movie, we decided to go back home. When we were close to our house, Rose screamed. I stopped the car and asked what was wrong. She saw someone sneaking away from our house into the woods. I told her to stay calm. We had a gun, and I could keep her safe. However, I didn't want to get in trouble with her, so we planned to leave the next morning. We did our packing, and I put my father's shotgun under the bed. That night, to calm her down, we watched a movie and went to sleep. In the middle of the night, I heard scraping sounds outside my door. I was terrified again. Maybe the fake police officer had just returned to creep into my house. Rose was asleep, so I quietly grabbed the gun and went to the living room window. I peeked through the blinds and saw a man standing in front of the window, trying to look inside. I jumped back and screamed. I went outside the back door, shot in the air three times and yelled loudly to scare him away. After that, I felt a bit relieved. I went back inside, knowing he wouldn't come back. We got through the night safely. The next morning, I called the police and told them what happened. We visited the house a few times after that, and thankfully, the creepy guy never came back, at least while we were there. I pray no one has to go through what I did being with my date at my own vacation home. So, what do you think is happening at Adam's farmhouse? Who was that creepy guy on their door? What were his intentions? Share all your theories down in the comments. Our second story is about a civilian's road incident with a fake police officer in Tabernash, Colorado. Just sit back and listen to one of the most horrifying tales ever told. In the middle of the night at around 1 a.m., 
I was driving through Tabernash, Colorado. I was really tired and was going at a speed of 55 miles per hour on this wide empty road. And all of a sudden, in the middle of nowhere, flashing red and white lights appeared on my car's rear view mirror. It was a police vehicle. I got confused because I didn't break any laws of the speed limit, nor were my brake lights off. I was a bit afraid and curious at the same time. So, even before he could put on the car siren, I immediately pulled over to avoid any trouble. I had this thought that maybe the officer behind me was mistaken, or maybe he needed some help. After I pulled over, the officer got out of his car and came to me. At first, he greeted me and then asked for my license and registration. I told him to tell me what's going on, because I knew my rights and did nothing wrong to be treated this way. In response to that, he said, I will let you know what you did wrong, but first, show me your license and registration. That got me a little suspicious and worried. Then I took a look at his uniform and badge. He was only wearing a vest. Suddenly, I got shocked and scared, as there was no police tag on his vest and neither on his badge. It looked off to me, and I realized that definitely something fishy is going on. I asked him to show his badge number, but he did not agree to it. I was not 100% sure if he was really a fake police officer, but I could not believe him either. I respectfully asked him to show proof or call his superior who I can talk to. He yelled at me to open the car lock and get out of the car at once or I will be arrested immediately. He tried to open the lock with his hands. That got me triggered. I started the car and took off and he was shouting at me to stop right there. As I was driving, I saw his car again, this time flashing his lights and chasing me. I called 911 and told a lady that a fake police officer was chasing me. I told her everything. She told me to go to the nearest police station to my location to get help. The fake cop was still following me as I was halfway to my destination. Now, all of a sudden, he put off the flashing lights and took a right turn away from the road. I was relieved now as I got rid of him. But I drove to the police station and told them everything about this guy, about the car, his appearance, and which road he went on. The police assured me that they would look into the matter more seriously. I felt safer and returned home the same night. What is your take on this fake cop story? Do you think it's right to run away from a cop who looks suspicious? What would you do late at night when you were driving and in the middle of nowhere a car comes and tries to pull you over? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. Before we hear another story, why don't you subscribe to this channel and smash that bell icon? We post a bunch of scary stories every week. So subscribe now if you don't want to miss out on any of the latest updates. New Security System Our last and one of the most true disturbing stories of fake police incidents is about a 29-year-old man in Michigan. Get your chair near an ambient fireplace and be prepared to listen to the most spine-chilling horror story ever told. I am a 29-year-old bachelor. I work in Los Angeles, but I spend my weekend at my house in a small town in Michigan. I love spending my weekends here as it takes all the burden off me as I try to get away from the city life that I'm sick of. This weekend, after traveling back to my house, I was having a good time on the couch having a drink. Suddenly, I heard a knock at the door. I was just a bit surprised to see a guy who asked me if I wanted to buy a new security system for the house. He said to me that I must get a security system as there have been some recent reports of break-ins in the area. He then asked me to give him my phone number so he can send all the details and prospects of the product. I was in a really good mood so I took it casually and gave him my number as I also wanted to avoid more interaction. I guess there was something about this guy that unnerved me a bit. He had a creepy liking to his appearance and I don't really know why exactly. Later, I went into the kitchen and prepared dinner for myself. While eating my food, I was watching Yellowstone in the living room. I was high on booze, so I watched it for a couple of hours lying on the couch. At around 11 p.m., there was someone knocking at the door. It is not a good time to knock on someone's house this late, especially in this neighborhood. So I ignored it and hoped that whoever was there would go away. But he kept on knocking aggressively and supposedly was in no mood of leaving without getting a response. Then I got a call on my phone which said 911. I picked up the phone. It was a man who knew my name. He said, Mr. George, we are calling from the police department. Please open your door. Our team is right outside. We need to ask you some questions. There's been a serious crime in your neighborhood. This didn't make any sense as I did not hear any police sirens and I could not see any officers or police cars through my front window. So I hung up the phone saying, I don't trust you. Now, all of a sudden, I was gaining my conscious back and my heart was starting to pound more heavily. 
So I called 911 emergency and told them about this call and the incident. The operator said to me that the call I received earlier is absolutely fake and we did not call you. As I was on the phone, someone started kicking the back door of my house and I kept on screaming. The operator told me to stay calm. The police are on their way and grab any sharp object in case of emergency. Within 15 minutes, the police arrived. They searched my property and assured me that I'll be safe. After two hours, they left, but I could still see a cop car close to my house so they can catch if any suspicious guy is around the house. That's all I could remember from that night. Since then, the stranger hasn't shown up. I feel safe, but now I've also gotten a bit more cautious when giving my contact details to people. So, what do you think is happening with George? What would you do if this happens to you when you're home alone? If you enjoy this video, don't forget to visit our YouTube channel. We share true disturbing stories every week. So head over there now for the complete experience, dim the lights, and find a quiet spot. For now, relax and sleep to dream.